First, let's talk about how the system works. Here's a simplified model of it. White is a cargo box that usually has drills in it. Then the blue is the left arm, green is a bucket, yellow is a finger support, and red is a finger. Notice the sequence. Yellow, red, blue, then green. So when I activate the system, finger support goes down. Then the fingers close and either push something in the bucket or clamp it between the fingers and the bucket. Then the left arm lifts up the bucket. Then the bucket tilts, dumping whatever may be in it. And then the fingers release, just in case they're holding on to something. When I press the switch again, the sequence runs in reverse. Fingers close, bucket tilts forward, and then lowers down. The entire system is run off one controller. Here are the settings for it. So first of all, we got 90 degrees for the yellow, then 105 for the red, then 45 for the blue, and then 75 for the green. Right after that, the red and the yellow both go back 30 degrees. Here's a simple connection diagram, just to show you which way the bearings rotate. One, two, three, and four. That way all the values in the controller stay positive at all times. Well, except for that release at the end. And while I'm thinking about it, the sizes are cargo box is 12 long, 7 tall on the back, 5 tall on the front. The left arm, bearing, bearing to bearing, is 13 long. The bucket is 7 tall on the back. It is, technically should be 8, even though in this model it is 7 bearing to the tip. 7 tall on the front. Then the finger support is 5 long. And then the finger itself is 8 tall. Some of you may have noticed that there is something different about this harvester. Right there, right on the side of the cargo box, with a spring in it. It's a simple mechanism that allows the bucket to move up and down freely, more or less, when it's lowered, or be lifted up all the way when it has to. Here's a diagram of this mechanism. Notice that out of all four bearings that are used, only the yellow one is powered, in this case, by a controller. So when the switch is activated, everything just moves freely, and the blue block on the end moves with the arm. Now let's say I'm harvesting along, all is fine, but then I run over something, and something pushes the arm up. In this case, the spring is compressed, but the arm can still move up and down, even though technically it's still in a lowered position. When too much weight for the spring is applied, then the red hook comes into contact with the blue arm, still allowing it to move up and down like it should. And while you can skip the springs and just use bearings in a couple of links, well, unfortunately, bearings are not all that strong. Before starting the build, make sure you have enough materials. You will need 404 concrete for the base, 242 steel for the cargo box, 24 wood for the lift arm, 162 pieces for the bucket, in this case I used small pipes, 28 bearings, 46 large pipes for steering, suspension and the float mechanism for the bucket, 6 drills, 4 wheels, 2 switches, 2 short wedges that you can get from the top of the warehouse, 2 level 1 racing springs, 2 level 1 off-road springs, 2 level 2 racing springs, and 2 level 3 engines. You will also need a level 2 seat, a collector, a refined bot, a level 4 controller, and a gas can. Optional is one or logic and four distance sensors if you want to fully automate the refine process. Let's build the base for this miner. You can pause the video now if you want to copy this blueprint, but it will make more sense in just a minute. Alright, now that you know what you need for the machine, and you built the base, let's make it into, well, a machine. Let's start with a 12x12 cargo box. It is going to be 6 tall on the front, and 7 tall on the back. Sides are also 6 tall. Alright, with the cargo box built, let's place the seat. The gas canister. The resource collector. The refine bot. The storage chest. A couple of engines. A controller. And a couple of switches on the back. Connect a refiner to the chest using some glass pipes. Then add the bucket, some wheels, some drills, spaghettify all the wiring, 
And as the saying goes, fill in the rest of the owl. You should end up with something like this. Add color to taste. Do a quick sanity check to make sure the bucket loader works like it should. And let's go find some rock. As luck would have, it looks like we have a small piece of rock right next to the build platform. Coincidentally, the machine works pretty well. For getting rid of the robots that are chasing you. This looks like a good candidate for harvesting. Not too difficult to get to, but also a bit more interesting than, ju than just something out in the flats. Or better yet, let's have a go at something a little bit easier and come back to those two. Got one. After totally not giving up on this previous rock formation, I decided to find one that's a little closer to what you'll find in a regular gameplay. Yeah, that's right. Did not give up. You can see the suspension spraying system working beautifully to allow the bucket to move up and down. Those drills on the front do their thing. Some large rocket, the bucket is even struggling with how heavy it is. There she goes. As a sunset, and we drink our victory milkshake and eat our victory burger, we do see how much we mined. Looks like a bit over three stacks of stone, about a stack and a half of metal, and some scrap metal from a couple of unfortunate robots. I'd say that's a pretty good haul.